Hey folks, welcome to John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. We're going for big old jumbo perch on the Bay of Green Bay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These fish are all in our harbors. Close to 14 there. Are you having fun? I'm having a blast. Fleet Farm presents John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Fleet Farm, the ultimate fishing headquarters. Folks, I'll tell you what, we just have a sensational day out here on the Bay of Green Bay, and we're not walleye fishing like normal. We're perch fishing today. It's my favorite and, thing. <laughs> and, and, and Brett, you know, you've been a guide for a long time and one of the most successful guides out here, but perch are your deal now. I love them. Uh, I mean, I still do a lot of walleye fishing, love walleye fishing, but perch fishing's fun. And you get out here, and, and the limit's 15, which is yep. plenty for a, a guy to take home. More than enough, yeah. And uh, you've got two different bites. One in deep water, one in weeds, bigger fish in deep. Yep, you got to weed through some small ones up in the weeds, but sometimes it can be a better bite. Now we have our co-guide here today, and this is, uh, who is this? It's my boy Nash. I know, Nash. I've <laughs> fished with Nash since you were about this big. How's everything going with you, buddy? Good, how you been? I have been pretty good. Now, you've been out here with your dad quite a bit. How would you rate the perch fishing out here? A lot of years it's really good, but sometimes it's some couple of hard days, but normally it's really good. We're going to catch something? Yes. All right. Hey, folks, <laughs> we'll show what we're using and how we're using it. All of that coming up right after this. Use a polar trailer or cart to check off your to-dos easily and quickly. All polar trailers and carts are built to last and come with a five-year warranty. Polar trailers and carts are built for projects, no matter what you have to get done. These trailers and carts can withstand anything when you put them to the test. They are built strong. Polar trailers and carts, built for lawn, garden, farm, and field to help you get all your outside projects done. I'll tell you what, folks, I've been a proud user of Amsoil for many years, and us sportsmen a lot of times not only have a truck, but a boat, an ATV, a snowmobile. And how do you figure out which Amsoil product to use in each machine? Yeah, that can be a challenge sometimes, and, you know, we make it easy. We've got a lookup guide. You just go to Amsoil.com. You put in your vehicle, whatever it may be, whether it's a boat, a wheeler, a truck, a trailer, whatever. Um, you pick out your product. It tells you how much and which product to put in. Real simple. And one thing I want to mention, too, Amsoil does a ton of research before you even put the product on the market. You make sure that it's the best. That's correct. It's years in the making for a product to launch. There's a ton of research and development to make sure that it's going to protect like it's supposed to. And folks, to find the Amsoil you want, go to Amsoil.com. Hey, welcome back, folks. As we talked about, we're on the Bay of Green Bay, and we are after the famed jumbo perch. And you've got a really simple rig here yeah. that uh, the clients can get used to. But this is called a drop shot. So explain, start with the sinker. At the bottom, I've got usually a couple of bell sinkers, and, and I, I put a snap on there so I can change up the weight depending on current or wind or whatever. Um, up above, another hook with a minnow. Up above that, another hook with a worm. And so you let that sit on the bottom. Bottom, yep. And you can bounce the bottom a little yeah, bit. Yeah, kind of bang in the bottom. It stirs up some of the sediment down there and attracts the fish. So you want to bounce a little bit to attract the perch in. Yeah, yep. I'll tell you what, that didn't take long and I got my net man here. Old Nasheroo. Here he comes, Nash. Ooh, yeah, buddy. Look at the size of this perch here, folks, to start the day. If I can get Nash to move over a little bit. Hey, Nash, seriously, buddy, look at the size of that perch. That's look a at nice that perch. Thing. Now, is that is that unusual that size? No, not really out here. It's really there's a lot of big perch out here. Is that ever gorgeous? I mean, and the beautiful coloring on that fish, and and what you do when, once that drop shot is sitting on the bottom, you just hold your rod steady. Yeah, and you just can kind of just work it up and down a little bit and bring it up a little ways and just hold it there. When you drop it back down, sometimes you'll feel a tick tick and you set the hook. And you already missed one. <laughs> yep. But I didn't miss that one, did I? No, what is didn't. that? Jolly, what, how big is that? That's probably a 12. 12 incher. Look at that. Nice start. Oh, is that beautiful. Ooh, now you in the back of the boat there, John. Yeah. You know, Nash, I, I'm at impressed with how me? these fish fight. You yeah, know they that? pull pretty good. I mean, seriously. Ooh, look at this one coming in here. 
Another beauty, Brad? Yep. Oh my, look at that. That one I was casting the drop shot out away from the boat. That was actually the first cast I made. It, it really is. I mean, this is just such world-class fishing. And you know, you you and I've fished the bay for many, many years, you yeah. especially. But, and they came back strong about eight, 10 years ago. Yep. Is it still good? Is it still on the upswing? I think so. You know, it, it's getting better every year. Um, we're seeing more and more big, big fish. Uh, you know, there's some beautiful fish out here. We try to let the really big ones go. This right here is a perfect eater, about a 12 yeah. incher. How big is that one now? Probably about 11, 12. And that was on the minnow? That was on a minnow, yep. Got another one two casting in a row it out away there, from the boat. Yeah, two casts in a that row. That is awesome. And we're gonna talk a little bit about, oh, here he comes, here nice he one. comes. I can, this is so cool, Jolly. I mean, you know, I like catching five, six pound walleyes, but there is something real special I, about fish like I that. I love perch fishing. You know? Yeah, they're such cool looking pretty fish and they taste really good. Well, the thing is, you know, and you were a great, great musky guide for many years. <laughs> yeah. And it's just kind of cool to see you kind of change a little bit. These are just as exciting. I would rather catch a 16 inch perch than a 50 inch musky. Yeah, what is it's, your biggest out here, your biggest perch? Uh, 17's the biggest one I ever caught. Seriously, yeah. what is that one? This one's about another 12. There's a lot of nice 12, 13 inches out here. Look at Got that guy, one. he's a machine. Oh, and, there we oh, go. oh that, now that's a tiny one. Yeah, yeah and, tiny 10 incher. I mean, seriously, that's a gorgeous perch anywhere you go in the state of Wisconsin. Yeah. And that's a tiny fish. That's that's the, on the, definitely on the small end uh, yeah. for, for fishing out here in the rocks. We get a lot of them this size up in the weeds, but, um, oh, 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 what, I wanted water. To, what I wanted to ask you, buddy, is, uh, you know, we're in early July now. July and August, are those good months to get out here? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, perch fishing is based more on the day than time of year. Uh, we get catch them all throughout the season, but some days are good, some days are bad. But the, the days the perch aren't biting, the walleyes usually are. Now, your dad's been yelling at you to let him eat it a little <laughs> bit when you get the bite. Did you let him go a little bit there? Yeah. Okay, here he is. And I just got nice know. Oh, that's another beautiful fish, Nash. And uh, I want to tell the folks, seriously, over the last couple of years, your biggest fish out here is? Uh, my biggest perch would probably be 15 and a half that. inches. 15 and a half? I mean, that's a big fish. And I know I've fished walleyes with you many, many times. What's your favorite? Do you like these perch as much as the walleyes? Oh, uh, I like the perch more because they're tastier to eat and they're more fun to catch in my opinion. Yeah, hold that one out, buddy. That's smaller than mine though. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna end up beating me or not? We'll see. We gotta really talk about the technique, how you're getting bit like this. Yeah. Is that another day here? Yes. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Another nice one. Oh, that is a nice one. But, you know, there's when they're really biting on days when they're really biting, you can just leave your rod over the side of the boat and make sure you're near the bottom. Yep. But on days, uh, calm days, and it's getting calmer as the days go, days going on here. You want to cast out? Yeah, I, that's what I'm doing right now, and it, it always works good on a calm day. Um, I bomb cast that same drop shot that we showed earlier, and throw it way out there and I just slowly, slowly, slowly work that drop shot rig back to the boat. And that, it, when it's calm like this, the boat could actually spook the fish. Yeah, absolutely, even in deep water. Uh, so yeah, the sound of your trolling motor, locators, everything, I think it kind of pushes those fish out to the sides and by casting way out and then slowly working it back, gets them to bite. Uh, on. You are so good. Now you and your dad, uh, let's see, how big? Oh, that's, this is actually, is that the smallest of the day? And that's still a beautiful fish wherever you go. Are you getting more of them on the top or the bottom hook? Oh, uh, I think it's about even. I've gotten, got them about on both. It yeah. just really depends on and what minnow is more lively. So you're doing what your dad doing. Go out, let it go to the bottom, drag a little bit, let it sit and jiggle, right? Yes. Yes, indeed. Hold them out. That's the smallest of the day, folks. Breaking news from Fleet Farm. Check out this deal. 20% off all Berkeley products on sale starting at $159. If, the, another one. if these fish weren't so big and beautiful, I would be mad at you for catching all the fish <laughs> back there. Oh, this is a nice uh, one. Let's see that. Oh, my, another tank. I'll get him, Nash. Uh, can you I just got it, I got it. Oh, there you go, Jolly. 
Yeah, you don't really want to flip these in, do you? Scoop! <laughs> he just came unhooked right there. Did he really? Yeah. Was... Oh, good maneuver there, buddy. Good job, Nash. And you know, you and I were talking before. That's a big one. We're using um, side imaging a lot for doing this type of fishing, and even just the 2D sonar. Yeah. But, um, so you might be on a school, you catch four or five and you don't get bit for a half hour, you move, move to a new school? Yep, I ride around, and I use the 2D a lot for that. Just a regular locator, and ride, ride around until I see a big blob of them down there on the bottom, and then we stop, and you, you get the active ones, and there might be a hundred of them down there, and you'll get four or five active ones, move to the next school, get four or five active ones, and then just keep on moving around. We gotta tell the folks, you and I have been getting a little frustrated up here in the front, aren't we? Okay, Nash, let's see what we got here, buddy. Oh, that's a dandy, Nash. No, but tell the folks, uh, Nash, seriously, you and I have been getting a little frustrated because your dad's catching all the fish, right? That is true. So, <laughs> what tip did he give you there? Uh, just make sure when it's on the bottom, make sure when you're, um, casting them, make sure that when, like, after you first let go of the slack, make sure it's actually a fish by waiting for that tug, which I did right here, and I caught this beautiful perch. Isn't that a beauty right there, buddy? No, yeah, hold on, yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I want the people at home to appreciate that. And that's only about a 12, Brett? Yeah, it's probably 12 and a half, yeah. Now you're not frustrated. <laughs> We are fishing the Bay of Green Bay out of O'Connell, Wisconsin. A two hour drive from Milwaukee, three and a half hours from Chicago, and four and a half hours from Minneapolis. If you are a spring walleye fisherman, grab some of these. They're an incredible bait. Kaolins, rattling Google eye, hair jigs. Right there, Ryan. Ooh, that one pounded it. Wow, dude. That is my first cast. Beautiful walleye right there on the hair, man. Perky, lively, smacking hair jigs. Doesn't get much better, does it? Big, fat, chunky spring walleyes. Out here, it takes a certain type. The type who's always the first one out. The type who knows deep down everyone else is just fishing for second. Enter the Apex Series. See more fish. Seize more victories. Settle for nothing less. With unrivaled clarity, it's the top fish finder for the most demanding type of angler. Only from Hummingbird. Folks, I've relied on Johnson Pump products for many years, and now they're even better. Check out the new Aqua Void Bilge and the Aqua O2 Aerator. The best advantage with the new products is no tools necessary to replace your motor cartridge. Quick watertight connector and the same easy change cartridge. With the new motor cartridges, we have a high efficiency impeller and a low amp draw motor. To the angler, they're gonna have faster fill of their live wells and they're gonna have better aeration along with a faster evacuation of their bilge. This pump will fit on any boat. It has a multi-configuration inlet port as well as a 360 rotation outlet port. Johnson Pump, reliability on board. Well, a whisper of a breeze, but we've been yeah. catching fish in the calm all along here too, folks. <laughs> yep. Jolly, I just missed one and I got really mad. <laughs> I, I heard that. Okay, look at this, look at this <laughs> guy. Oh, that's a nice in. one. Oh, oh he's man. wrapped up in your he's, line Yeah, he's there, all buddy. wrapped up. That's why he felt heavy. Still a nice perch. Oh yeah, that's that's gorgeous. Yeah, fish. he's hooked on the top hook and then hooked by the bottom hook. And... Okay. No, but I mean, hey, Brett, I want to mention too, you know, a lot of folks are going to want to do this with you. Yeah. And, you know, today I, I we're in my boat. And I've got about 20 rods in here. <laughs> and you said, no, I got everything rigged. So people come out with you. You've got all the yep, rods. I've got all the rods, really nice custom rods. And I've got everything set up the way that we fish out here. And uh, So just bring a lunch. and Bring uh, a lunch, rain gear if it's going to rain, and that's about it. 
You, you're, yeah, I got it. Ooh, look at this guy. Oh, Another jolly. nice one. Is that the biggest of the day right yeah, there, my friend? Close. Yeah, that's probably a 13 or so. That's oh, a nice that fish. is a big fish, buddy. And you've gotten them up to, again, remind us? Biggest one I ever got out here was 17, uh, but we've had quite a few 16s. Biggest this year is probably 16 and a quarter. But yeah, there's some big, big perch out here. Oh, that one's awesome. But I got to remind the folks, and you are a very good finesse fisherman. I've fished with you for years. Sure. And uh, you got to go super slow. Got one Matt's here. have got one. Nicely done there, pal. You got the patience too, right? Huh? Kind of. You kind <laughs> of? What do you mean? You going to flip him in? Good job there. Now, pass that one back to your dad. Yeah, hold those up together now. Yeah. Nash's is barely a keeper, right? That's that's a good eater. That one's gonna taste great. Uh, but yeah, you know this one's pretty big. <laughs> I mean, no, that is a giant. If if Nash can grab that one and hold it next to you, you can get an idea there, folks. And uh, but I mean, what I was saying before, Brett, you gotta go like really slow, huh, buddy? Yeah, super slow. Just barely, barely moving that drop shot rig. And there's days out here when they're real aggressive. Too. Oh yeah, there's days where they're just hammering it or we're fishing bobbers and the bobbers are going down and it's easy but today's one of those days you got to really Aren't you really proud work. of your son there nash he's he's a great little fisherman it, how many it, years you guys been fishing together well his whole life you know i've been taking him since he was a baby oh that's wonderful and nash you get along with your dad right yes well i'll tell you what you got that casting technique down perfectly yeah, jolly it's, it's just very very slow slow subtle movement of the rod and well, yeah, I'll have you show that. Let's see what, how big this guy is. Another nice one. Oh, they're all gorgeous. But yeah, I, um, I'm not getting bit over the side of the boat. And obviously, uh, you're getting bit like crazy on the cast. Yeah, you got to get way out there. Look at that fish. Woo! -hoo. You know, you and I don't ice ice fish too much out of here, but no. uh, it's pretty good too, isn't it? Oh yeah, it? yeah. Our buddy Tim Maher does real well ice fishing for perch. Yeah, I mean, all right. Let's uh, let's put that away and and show us how you're doing that technique. Okay. Yeah, I'm just kind of lobbing it out there so I don't cast my minnow off. Okay. Get it out there, and then I let. We're in deep water, so I don't close my bail right away. I let it let it fall to the bottom right where it landed. And once it gets to the bottom, I'm just raising it up very, very slowly. I get to the top, I jiggle it a little bit and just kind of let it hold there. And then I move it just a little bit, real slow. And that bite is super light. You just feel a little tick on there. And as soon as I feel that bite, I just drop slack back down to it and let them eat. Tighten it up till I feel them again and set the hook. Now on a, on a windy day, they'll bite closer to the boat. Yeah, on a windier days, you almost have to just fish straight down. Um, you could cast out off the back of the boat, it works pretty good, but uh, typically on these calmer days, you just gotta get out away from the boat and work it real, real slow. <laughs> oh, I can't believe this one. <laughs> Jolly, you are so good at finesse fishing, buddy. You really, really are. <laughs> And, you know, if you had a windier day, like you said, you run bobbers for the clients. And, yeah. And th that's a lot easier, isn't it? Oh, yeah. The bobbers, definitely, you know, when you got a bite. Uh, this style of fishing, you really, really got to be focusing on what you're doing. Um, it is a very, very light, subtle bite. Uh, but it's it's working, but it's it's, yeah. it's, it's tough. It's and, not know, easy. Again, you know, we got a teeny breeze now. But yeah. Th this is midday. It's 1230 in the afternoon with bright, sunny skies on a minor, minor cold front, right. we've caught a lot of fish. Yeah, no, this has been excellent. Uh, you know, better conditions when we got a little chop. Uh, they, they bite better. Earlier in the morning, they bite better. But, uh, but yeah, this is pretty good. Folks, it's time now to announce this week's winners of the Fleet Farm John Gillespie's Waters and Woods 2024 Fishing Contest. This week's first winner is John Sunset of Green Bay, Wisconsin, caught this 21-inch smallmouth bass on Pipe Lake using a jerk bait. Jay Bauer of Ellsworth, Wisconsin, caught this 29-inch walleye on the Mississippi River using a jig and plastic. Tyler Feldman of Glenbella, Wisconsin, caught this 15-inch crappie on a Vilas County Lake using a cast master. 
Eric Fency of Greenfield, Wisconsin, caught this 51-inch sturgeon on the Wisconsin River using a nightcrawler. And this week's first kid winners, Joan and Torres of Denmark, Wisconsin, caught this 53-inch northern pike on the Fox River using a spinnerbait. And Luke Martin of Stevens Point, Wisconsin, caught this 52-inch sturgeon on Port Dam using a minnow. Each week, I shop online at FleetFarm.com to check out the latest deals. This week, save $10 on the Daiwa Crossfire Spinning Combo on sale for $39.99 and the Suffolk's Advanced Superline Green Braided Fishing Line on sale for $14.99. Meet Chris McGillis of McGillis Weimer, experienced personal injury lawyers. John, you, you've got to know me. I mean, I'm a really passionate person. Everyone on my staff is, everyone on my team is. Um, you know, we are passionate about what we do. Helping somebody out, uh, protecting them, doing everything we can to help tell their story, to make sure they're treated fairly with integrity and with respect, and get a fair resolution, whatever that is for the client. I mean, that's extremely important to us. That's really all that matters. Nice hook tip there, Charles. <laughs> hey, we got to tell the folks here we've kind of switched gears hey, here. There's a nice and that's perch. a beautiful perch. But I love fishing with you because you come out with all rods set for all different circumstances. Yep, exactly. And that was on a slip bobber, huh? That was on a slip bobber. We moved to a different spot, a little shallower water. And uh, just threw this bobber out. I was getting the second one set here. And got a nice perch. And you're using a whole night crawler? Full night crawler. Um, a lot of times I'll break it down and just use a half or a quarter. Um, but sometimes on this particular spot, I run into some walleyes too. So I like to use a full crawler. And you saw the breeze come up and good idea to try to slip on. Yeah, get up in some shallower water with this breeze. That's a nice fish. Yeah. Oh, now Nash, what, what'd you just say, Jolly? <laughs> Looks bigger than a perch, oh, whatever that it is. Oh, that bending like crazy. <laughs> Could be. And we got the wind is blowing now, too. What do we got there, guys? I don't know. It could be a bass, could be oh, sheep. Oh, that's a hoo. Nash, way to handle them there, buddy. Just take her easy, bud. Okay. Sheep. Hey, not bad. Hey. That, you know, that's one thing we should mention, <laughs> Brett. When you come to the Bay of Green Bay, whether you're perch fishing or you're walleye fishing, you're going to come across <laughs> sheep's head. They are everywhere out here. They're in three feet of water, they're in 30 feet of water, they're everywhere. And what you've always said to me, too, when you're walleye fishing, fish and you find sheep said there's likely to be walleyes oh, around. Absolutely, you know. And our buddy Matt Lazarski back in Point would love to eat this one. He does. And you <laughs> he know loves what? Them. He he makes fish tacos yeah. out of them and says they're really good. Yeah, he likes them. Well let's see what we got here this time. Well we got sell some perch and you know that is one of the smaller ones of the day today brett but i'll tell you what you go anywhere in the state of wisconsin and you catch these you're going to be a happy camper and that would be about a nine incher folks and we should mention to the folks you know we talked about it before when brett caught that we're using slip bobbers now and this is another thing to look for brett is these big weed beds closer to shore yeah the weeds out here are there's huge, huge flats of weeds, and there's tons of perch in them. They usually run a little bit smaller than the deep water perch, um, but I still get 12, 13 inches up in here. Yeah, and, and a lot of fish. <coughs> Quite a few, and you get your occasional walleye or smallmouth or sheephead or whatever in, in, up in here too. A little baby one. Oh, I want to show that to the folks. <laughs> so that's about a one, maybe a one and a half year old fish yeah, right there, folks. Yeah, that's a young one. And it is, you're really good to see, the, it's good to see the recruitment. There's, there's a ton of little fish like this. Uh, when you fish the weeds, we catch a lot of them. And I try to be real careful with them, obviously. We want them to get bigger. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of little ones in the shallower and water. And you like to see that, though. Oh, yeah, it's great for the future. I'll tell you, folks, one of the biggest assets that we have out here doing this type of perch fishing is the Minn Kota Altera Quest. And it would be hard to fish this without a good solid Minn Kota spot lock system, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, you know, the only other option would be to use an anchor and that's a lot of work. Uh, the Minn Kota spot lock is one of the best fishing inventions I've ever used. Uh, I use it every single day out here. That's This is exactly how I perch fish every day with the spot lock. 
Oh, hey, there you go. There there there's go. an eater right there. Nice job, Nash. I'll tell you what, Brett. You know, we should tell the folks we've only fished a half a day today. Right. And we have done extremely well. As a matter of fact, do you mind at the end here we pour those fish out and show some of those bigger ones again? Yeah, sure. And I like the way that you operate. You just kept, you know, five for me, eight for you, and, and you know, we didn't hog the fish. Right. But, uh, uh, guys can keep 15 out here. Yeah, you can keep 15 a piece, but I, you know, for my wife kid and the three kids, if we eat 15 in a, a night uh, for a fish fry, that's a lot. We usually have leftovers. Yeah, so. and well, we'll show them at the end. That's hey Nash. Have you had a fun day? Yes, I have. A lot of action. Some small ones, but a lot of nice fish. Yeah. You know, when you catch big perch like that, you get pretty hungry, don't you? Yeah. And when you were whining in the boat all day, oh, can't we cook the Johnsonvilles? Well, I'm cooking them for you, okay? And these are special. You know, Johnsonville regular brats are awesome, but oh, yeah. these are Johnsonville firecracker brats. Nice. And they come out in July, and of course, they're 100% cuts of, of beautiful premium pork, but they add some really good 4th of July spices to them. So they're going to be a little bit spicy. Cook them low and slow on medium heat until they're golden brown. All right, guys, take a bite. Mm. Brett? That's good. Is it really? You yeah. like the spices? That's a, that is excellent. Yeah. What do you think, buddy? That's really good. I think that's one of the best Johnsonville brats I've ever had. Well, that's awesome, buddy. And folks, I'll tell you what, look for Johnsonville Firecracker Brats at your favorite retailer today. Captain Brett Jolly guides the Bay of Green Bay on a daily basis. For more information, give Brett a call. That phone number is 715-581-5678. Oh, Pete, I'm getting too old for this. So, John, you haven't heard of Brian's Custom Steps? Oh, Pete, those are awesome. How can I get a set? Yeah, I love these big no-slip platforms, and they're made right here in Wisconsin. For more information on Brian's Custom Steps, call 920-315-0333. Folks, if you like fish, there is absolutely no better eating in the world. But if you like trophy perch too, this is the place to come. We're holding up, I guess, this would be six of our bigger ones today. Yeah. And is this kind of an average day? Yeah, I would say this is around average. You know, that 20 something fish uh, is pretty average. We do have better days, but you know, it was, it was a good day. Yeah, and we had the calm and now we got some waves, but I want to also ask you now, the rest of July and August, very good. Uh, you know, the walleye fishing will pick up too, but but we got great perch fishing ahead. Hey, nice job today, buddy. You did great. Let's hold these out one more time. And folks, that is our show for today. Please join us next week. Don't know where we're going to fish yet, but we will find a place somewhere. Until then, I'm John Gillespie, hoping to see you enjoying John Gillespie's Waters and Woods.